Well, man, listen, I appreciate you, uh, your guy reaching out. Um, I was very impressed with uh, the simplicity of this book. Uh, you took, so one of the things, first off, I'm talking with Kamal Mu, who is a, an attorney who wrote a book called The Straightforward Guide to the Music Biz. I always tell people one of my superpowers is simplifying very complicated issues, especially when it comes to social media and ads and band building and things like that. But uh, one of the, inside of my courses, one of my first videos is it's the lingo. And I start talking about the different lingo. And as I was reading your book, I'm like, wow, he even made it more simple than I did. And respectfully, I didn't think an attorney could make anything simple. Uh, but you <laughs> have accomplished that. So congratulations there. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what brought you to writing this great book. Oh, well, thanks for all that. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, well, I, you know, I started off as an uh, artist manager. Uh, I graduated law school in 2005, passed the bar in 2006. Uh, I, I, then I managed my brother's band for a number of years after that. Um, then I opened up my law practice in 2010 with a partner, and then I went solo, had my solo law practice in 2013. Um, so I think I have a really unique perspective because as a manager, I had to deal with the artists on a personal level and know how to speak to them and just communicate ideas and just really got to work with them on that level. And then as an attorney, that kind of translated over. So now when I speak to a lot of my clients, I know what their concerns are on a granular like day-to-day -day level because I went sure. on tour I used to sell shirts at you know after the shows and drive the tour van so I've been I've been out there so I have a lot of practical experience so I, I kind of know how to explain things in a way that makes sense and I think that a good attorney will make things simpler and not harder I think that's a good attorney will do that they'll explain everything in a simple way because it's, it's not rocket science it can be made simple it's just a matter of communicating it in a way that's straightforward and understandable well, and the key to that too, and I tell people all the time, they'll come to me and they'll say, well, my, my cousin's an attorney, so I'm going to have them look at my contract. I said, so how fantastic, your cousin's an entertainment attorney. And they're like, no, he practices real estate. I'm like, he should not be looking at your, your record contract because of the way things are written and terms and things like that. It's like, I've watched more people get in trouble after the fact. And many people come to me as I consult thousands of artists all over the world. And they're like, hey, Rick, would you take a look at this and tell me what you think? I said, well, I think you need to have an attorney look at it because as a manager, I know enough to go in and kind of glimpse and kind of say, okay, this is great. And I get your attorney to look at it. Everything seems to be fair. I'm looking at percentages. I'm looking at recoupment. I'm looking at advances. I'm looking at the things that I can explain to the artist. This is, this is decent. Now get your attorney to look at it so they can make sure that it's right. And one of the things that most people miss, and I get this a lot, and I'm not here now asking for legal advice, but I always tell people the, the, the worst part about the entertainment business is that you need to finalize the divorce before the marriage takes place. And that's pretty much what the contract is making sure that if this were to end, no, this is what you're responsible for based on the contract, but it's that divorce that is even sometimes more important that we need to look at with clauses and recoupment and getting masters back. You see right now, all these artists freaking out because they didn't realize that at the end of the divorce, if you're not recouped, you're right. not just walking away with your masters and things like that. So when you sit down with an artist and you say, okay, this, you may not think that this is a big deal right now, but this is a big deal. What are some of the areas of the contract that you're really looking at that are the big deal to you? Well, you know, one thing I tell all my clients is, and this is just a good, good advice in general. I think that, um, you know, ultimately the contract says what it says, but it's really the quality of people you're dealing with at the label. Because I've worked with, uh, for example, I had an artist who was an independent artist. She signed with the independent label. Contract was excellent. The numbers were great. They promised her a lot in there. Um, so she signed it and then they put her on the shelf and nothing happened for two years. And I think that's one thing I really talk to the artists about. Like, how do you feel about the label? Do you feel like they're really going to promote you? What's their reputation? What are they promising you? Um, do they get your creative vision where you want to go? Those are all kind of threshold things I look at first and I say, look, no matter what the contract says, if you don't have a good feeling about them, don't do it. And I, I always say it's like dating. You know, if you start dating sure. someone and you see some red flags in the beginning, don't look past that. You know, if, if something doesn't feel right, then trust your instinct. So that's kind of the first thing. Then, of course, we dig into the terms and just 
well, how, how many albums are you obligated for? How, you know, usually it's one album plus a number of options for additional albums. Uh, I try to limit that to maybe one or two if possible, because right. of course you want to try and, you know, usually a contract, the shorter contract's better for the artist than a longer contract. So stuff like that. And of course, advances, are they going to properly fund the recording? What are they promising for recording costs? You know, will they commit money to marketing? Um, stuff like that. So those are the nitty gritty things. But the real threshold question for me is, you know, how do you feel about the label? Are they going to treat you well? That's fantastic. One of the things that people don't understand is those options are at the option of the label. Uh, right. The majority of times you can sign a, you know, six album deal and maybe get one single or you could get shelved like he was just explaining and not get anything. I know a lot of artists today, especially as labels are not in the business of startups anymore. They're looking for things that are already working and they're jumping in. A right. lot of contracts are saying we need a single release by this certain point or we can walk whatever we brought. We can walk. There's a lot more negotiation that you have as an artist if you're bringing something to the table. And that's why I tell people, it's like, if you get signed to a label, you're an employee. If they come to you and they see something's happening, you can negotiate a partnership agreement. You can negotiate a licensing agreement. A lot of times now you already have a, a piece of work that's in the market that's working right now. And they just want to add their gasoline to that fire. So they're going to come and add the gasoline to the fire. When did you decide to start helping folks with this book? Well, uh, the funny thing is, I swear half my job is explaining things to my clients. And the same uh, things over and over and over again, I'm guessing, too. Yeah. And so when it came time to write the book, I said, you know, I think I could do a lot of good here. So I just a lot of it, it came out really quickly. I wrote the book really fast in a matter of weeks because it's the same conversations I've had over and over again. So I have ha I had streamlined ways of explaining things to people like I put, for example, in there, there's uh, there's a. Uh, there's an analogy that because sometimes people don't understand the difference between a musical composition and a sound recording. And that concept is kind of tricky for people to get. So I say, well, think of it this way. The composition is like the blueprint to build a house. And then the recording is like the finished house. Right. And, you know, you have to think of them as two separate things. So stuff like that. I, I think that um, there's a lot of um, artists out there, people working in the industry don't really understand a lot of this stuff. I had a friend who was a Grammy award winning songwriter a couple of years ago. He had no idea where his money was coming from. He had no idea about mechanical royalties or performance royalties. So then I went and sat down with him one day and just kind of explained all that stuff. So I think there's a need out there for a lot of people, even in the industry to sort of. Well, because it changes so fast. And I love the section on sound exchange because I had an artist that I had opened up a relationship at Radio Disney with and she got her song played and it was fantastic. And about nine months later, we ran into each other. I said, hey, just out of curiosity, I said, what was your sound exchange check like? Mm -hmm. And she's like, what sound exchange? And I'm like, oh boy, okay. Right. I need to rethink my business because I'm teaching people how to get their music out into the world, but they haven't registered their music properly and they didn't understand the differences and not, I always tell people, we're trying to function in a dysfunctional business because our rewards are not in direct proportion to the work that we put in. And it's not like you just check one box and everyone knows who to pay. It's right. like, there's so many different, here's the mechanical, here's internet radio, which is sound exchange and iHeart and Pandora. And oh my gosh, it got pulled over here. And I, I just copy, I just got all my songs copywritten. So I know I'm getting paid. I'm like, no, that just shows that you own it. That doesn't right. show them who to pay. So. When you're able to take this book, this book, by the way, I recommend all of you to get. It's under 100 pages for those of you that are worried. Uh, I think you followed the rule of write at an eighth grade level mm -hmm. because it's very easy to understand. That's why when, when the person who reached out to have you as a guest on the podcast, he goes, yeah, I've got this attorney that wrote a book. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. We already have Donald Passman. Thank you. Dude, this, this is like a 10th of the size and gets right to the point and it's relevant and it's current. And it was just, it was something that I looked at and I said, okay, this goes right to my recommended reading books for all the artists that I work with. It's like, you have to pick this up. So this is available at Amazon. It's available everywhere that you can get books pretty much, correct? Yeah, it's uh, the paperback is out right now. The ebook comes out on the 16th of November. So, you know, that'll be out on um, Apple and Amazon Kindle and Kobo and all the- Did you do out. an audio book of it? Uh, not yet. I was kind of waiting to see how it did. And if, you okay. know, if there's demand for it, then I definitely would be. Well, I think with a book like this, folks, you're going to want to dog ear it and highlight and things like that. And you can't, really can't do that with an audio book. I'm a big audio book person, but this was, like I said, it was so simple to sit down and read. And um, 
I had your person send it first in the digital form. And I just started scrolling through, reading it on my phone. You know, it was just so simple and so easy to do. People are always asking at what point should they seek out an attorney? What do you tell people? I always say that whenever there's um, a contract that's put in front of you, always get a qualified attorney to look at it. Uh, just like you said earlier, um, you know, you don't want to grab a real estate attorney. That's not their area. I, one analogy I use there is say you wouldn't go to a foot doctor for heart surgery. You know, we all have specialties. We, we right. specialize in certain areas. Music is a very specialized area. It's not something that any attorney can just pick up and do. Uh, so you want somebody who's got experience in that area. So uh, definitely, um, you know, whenever a contract is put in front of you, or even just if someone's thinking of making an offer, if you're talking to a label or publisher or anybody um, or a producer, just and they want to send you some terms, I'd say reach out to an attorney then and say, hey, could you negotiate this on my behalf? And, and I get it. You know, I work with a lot of independent artists. I know it's not always, um, I, they don't always have a lot of money. So I try and work with them and work out something that's affordable because I want to give them proper good representation um, and, and not break the bank for them. So that's how I do it. Well, and I also think too, that there's a lot of different agreements that are coming your way these days, whether it be a brand deal, if you're you know doing really well on social media and a, a brand sends you a contract, get somebody to take a look at it. Even if it looks great, the money that you will save yourself in the long run by having somebody's like, I said, you want to pay $200 now, or do you want to pay $20,000 later? Your call, you right. know, it's like, and, and a lot of uh, attorneys will, will do a quick consultation. They're, they're like a doctor. They'll diagnose your problem and go, okay, I can perform surgery on this. Here's what it is. Uh, for a long time, especially in Nashville, uh, attorneys were putting themselves on a 5% commission retainer and, uh, you know, it, 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 that was a weird vibe going on for a long time and things like that. My advice is if you've set your business up properly, that's an expense that you can write off when you mm -hmm. go in and get set up with your attorney. Uh, production deals, be very careful. For those of you, uh, there's a lot of producers out there that are now doing A&R and mm -hmm. they're signing you to these production deals. And there was an artist recently who had a production deal with a guy and he got excited. He went, took a meeting with a label and realized that he couldn't sign with that label because the producer had him locked in first right of refusal at another record company that the producer had to deal with and things like that. So guys, we could sit here and have a whole episode on horror stories, but oh, yeah. just make sure when anything is presented to you, you're going to get excited about it. You're going to feel that, oh my gosh, I've got to sign this right now or I'm going to lose it. Uh, if someone's rushing you to sign something it's probably not the best deal for you. Just know that I'm giving you that heads up right now. If they're legit, it's not going anywhere. They will give you the opportunity to do this. And if any of you get the opportunity to start negotiating with a record company, negotiate that the record company will pay in their advance, your attorney fees <laughs> up front for oh, yeah. you, and they can recoup that, <laughs> that yeah. later. I've seen people go, I can't even afford, no, the labels a lot of times understand, they want you to be represented well too. Mm -hmm. It's not the evil labels versus the artist. They all want the best deal. And if they're going into a relationship with someone that they like, also too, is if the label recommends an attorney for you, I don't know that that's always necessarily the right thing for you too, because there may be some types of you know, agreements that are in place, not saying that anyone's scrupulous or anything like that, but make sure that there's no conflict of interest. Make sure that you get someone to look at a, an entertainment attorney before you sign anything. And what is the best way for people to follow you on socials? I'm not saying for everybody to reach out and ask them for all this free legal advice, but what's mm -hmm. the best way for someone to reach out to you? And if they want to see about bringing you on and, you know, you, uh, you know, to take a look at something, where can they see about your, your rates and, you know, stuff like oh, that? Sure. Yeah. So if you go to uh, the website is my name, kamalmoo.com, K-A-M-A-L-M-O-O.com. That'll actually redirect to, um, you know, I, we have a website there with my former partner, but we just have the website just for leads and stuff. But uh, yeah, you'll see my, you'll find my contact info on there. I don't really have rates posted. I, I really tailor the rates based on the situation. Okay. Um, like I said, you know, I've, I've worked on some mil multi-million dollar deals that cost, you know, a certain amount. And then of course, if it's a small indie deal, then I'll work with you to try and make something, uh, you know, work that makes sense. So it really depends on the situation itself. Awesome. Well, man, I wish you the best of love, luck with the book. 
Uh, like I said, I've got an email database of over 50,000 of people that I'll be sending out with a link to go check it out because I think it's so important. As I tell everyone and the people that I work with, you are the business and all businesses need to protect themselves because the only person that really cares about you is you. You know, there are other people that are going to come into your life, but you've got to make sure that you're taken care of. You've got to make sure, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, I will never look down on anyone who doesn't ask the question. There are no dumb questions. When it comes to your future, when it comes to your, your music, the things that you've invested so much in, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't think that you're going to look weird because you're asking these questions. The difference between the superstars and artists that come and go is they understand their business. They make sure that the right people look at the right things at the right time. So come on, man, I appreciate you once again. Uh, super excited for people to get to uh, read this book and you're gonna be helping thousands and thousands of people. And uh, thanks for make, simplifying such a very complicated subject. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And, and definitely, I, I know what you mean, too. Like, I think uh, that that's my goal. I just want to help. And I know there's, like you said, there's a lot of longer books out there that are 500, 700 pages long. I doubt there's a, you know, an 18 year old musician is going to want to sit down and read that cover to cover. So I, I, like you said, I wrote it in mind for just a regular person, just pick up and read. You don't need a law degree. It's just very straightforward. And um, yeah, that's, I just want to try and help and hopefully, hopefully people enjoy it. And I know they will. I appreciate you, my friend. Cool. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.